Tama si Sir Boy. Oh. Okay, Sir. Start na, Sir. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, webinar entitled Strengthening UPLB Alumni uh, Alliance, an International Perspective. Uh, we are fortunate uh, today to have uh, two distinguished uh, outstanding UPLB alumni uh, in the person of our resource person, uh, Dr. Wirapun Tongma and uh, Dr. Corazon, Maria Corazon Kuku uh, Lopez. Uh, we're also uh, happy to note that uh, Dr. Wirapun Tongma is a uh, alumnus of the College of Public Affairs and Development, uh, having graduated uh, in 2013, uh, 2003 rather, uh, taking up the PhD in Extension Education. And of course, uh, uh, Dr. Kuku Lopez uh, took up his, her PhD in Community Development in 2006. So as I said, uh, both of them are uh, UPLB Outstanding Alumnus Awardees. And uh, this uh, webinar is brought to you uh, by the joint uh, efforts of the College of Public Affairs and Development, uh, the UPLB Alumni Association under Forrester Nayabal Manisfield, and uh, the CIPAP Alumni Association under uh, Environmental Planner uh, Paulo Velasco, and the uh, Office of the Alumni Affairs or Relations. Uh, uh, this webinar is uh, part of the celebration of the 102 uh, Loyalty Day of UPLB. So uh, this time, uh, this webinar will take a look at the uh, international perspective given that uh, our resource person this afternoon is the president of the UPLB Thailand Alumni Association based in uh, major university Chiang Mai, Thailand. So uh, without much ado, uh, I'd like to uh, turn over the uh, floor to uh, Dr. Wirapun Tongma, uh, the, the president of uh, major university. Uh, Dr. Wirapun. Paano? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Okay, the dean uh, and our our participant that uh, we try together for today. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, in this, yeah, in this afternoon that, uh, yes, that you, yeah, you can hear me, right? Yeah, yes, 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 we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I I think that the our voice delay. No. Is really delay because I can hurt my my voice again like that. I don't know because like a copy again like that. But anyway, yeah. Anyway, we would like to share in 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 my time. Yeah. Oh, may delay to. May delay. Pero patanong ako kita niya. Uh, Dr. Wenpun, can you see the uh, screen? Yeah, now, now when I talk and my, my voice come again like that. Ah, so okay. make a confuse, yeah, because 
very very delay yep oh. yes yeah yeah now now we already share my skin already okay yeah thank you mm. uh, you... you can you can start sir yeah you can start your uh, presentation uh, dr wirapur yes yes okay i i will start now yeah, yeah. Sir. okay <coughs> <coughs> so may may I start from Latin? Yes, yes. Because the the voice come to me my again like that, so make I confuse. But I I would like to start now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how to promote and sustain our stronger for UPLB alumni? So. Uh, that uh, in Yuling, I'm the, the president of UPLB Alumni Association of Thailand. Or right now, we try to help uh, make the, like uh, our work, our activity for help every year together. So I try to invite our member become our you know, everyone to become our member in uh, our association. But anyway, right now we have uh, almost 20, uh, 2,000. No, no. I mean, a whole of Thailand, maybe uh, 15,000. I don't know exactly. Okay. But uh, I mean, for alumni of the Philippines, because I'm also one of the member of the Philippine alumni who study in Philippines and come back, okay? come back to Thailand. But for UP Los Banos and UPLB alumni, right now we have 200 become our member. But we don't know exactly how many, because someone already long time already not that they uh, finish or get it from UP. Right now, we make uh, like a vision of our UPLB Alumni Association. We put that uh, become the professional in uh, globalizing agriculture and uh, society innovation network. Try to like uh, if UP, we, we can put U P L B A A T. Okay, we this is the core value that I try to do that. U it mean unity. P it mean professional. L it mean leadership, and also the B become the like a balance and action alumni association, and of course transformation. It means we should transform our uh, our work for the future. So right now we have like a strategy roadmap for three years, three years, and three years. Because uh, our term for the president of association, we try to have for three years. And we can become again another three years and can make for two term, cannot continue for the third term like that, but we can do after we break for one term or one year, I can continue for another term. So for the first three years, we try to become as an agriculture education network. And another, the second two, uh, three years, we try to become like a international agriculture innovation network. And the last three years that I, I just put for the nine year first, okay? You can see that I put there for the vision is globalizing agricultural innovation network. And if we concern to the state or the face of alumni, how we serve with them, okay? Like uh, from UP Los Banos, you can think about the alumni life cycle. If we can see from the, the skin here, new students, what they want. 
Now what they behave here. And if they get to it, I mean get to it in student. So what they behave here? Listen, graduate, what they uh, behave here. Like uh, they will attend for five years, 10 years, 15 years for re reunion, right? Like me right now, so I become maybe the the, the second phase, I mean the main uh, career graduate. It means after 20 years or 30 years, we become like a, another state. I mean another phase of alumni. So you, I can put here that we can make a, like a donate, donation, you know, uh, for our alumni. I mean alumni activities in the future. And can make like a, we can become uh, our guest speaker or guest lecturer together because we can share the knowledge or experience that we already success in our work, right? Like uh, the dean invite me for last year also and this year that you think that I already become some of the, you know, uh, success in my life after I get to it from uh, CPAP almost, almost 20 years, okay? So, and for the last, I mean, the last phase of our alumni, we keep thinking about the volunteer, okay? Can get them come to join together, consider, consider, uh, consider about leadership, okay? Let them enjoy with network, something like that. And another thing that the communication start, strategy, during different alumni or the life, life cycle of alumni, we can see from here, if new students, how we approach them, okay? Get it, uh, get waiting students, how we approach them, okay? And for the last, I mean the late career, how to, you know, contact with them. Maybe you can use email and uh, cell phone or phone together or traditional mail can can do like that to to contact with our alumni in the future. Like uh, in my university, I mean major alumni also. Now we have almost uh, we have the member more than a hundred thousand member because right now we already have a uh, eighty six years when they get to it. We let them become our member and they pay for our membership. I mean, I mean, in Metro University, we let them pay and become the membership and they will have the card for alumni, alumni license. Okay, they pay just only 300 per each, 300 per each. But every year we uh, have the student more than almost 20,000. Almost 20,000 in our whole university. But every year they will graduate, uh, graduate about 5,000. So alumni, I mean, major alumni association can get some money from the member because every, mem uh, every student should become the member and they pay 500 or 300, 300 for two or three years, but 500 for a whole life like that. So I think in UP, Los Banjos or UP system should think about that. How we let our students become the member of our alumni. Okay, so it means every uh, student can become our alumni to all. Okay, and what is strategy to Im improve our alumni engagement. This is very really important that how we let them become our loyalty. They love, they become the owner of alumni. So we should start with them during their study there. Let them understand what is, what is the activity of alumni, what they will get or what they will gain from when they become alumni of CPAP, when they become alumni of UPLB, like that. So let them understand first, and they will become loyalty to work and you know become the member in the future. Anyway, the important that 
uh, we can get from them not really to make them you know donation for the first because uh, when they get to it they not yet have work so if we concern to the student for the first year the second year after they get it then they will really feel to donate but how we let them become member first okay and for the long run we can get them and make them have uh, see our activity for every every year that we have okay so start for our alumni engagement early let them become our member earlier okay for their lifelong relationship okay and make me make me like a consistent okay decide our strategy to for the short term and long term outcome let them understand that if you become the member what you will get like uh, in my university that we we try to do now uh if they become uh, they have daughter they have son or they have niece we let them come to study in our university and we have some scholarship for them okay yeah this is one more thing for the study to let them become the member and of course the feedback the feedback when they come our they become our the member the feedback we should ask them they would like to improve something of the activity of course when they work or they get it from our university maybe for 5 year 10 years they what what would like to come to the skill okay or upskill their knowledge upskill their technology or innovation they can come this is one more thing that we can make a like a short training course a non credit to our alumni association or to our member i mean for our alumni okay this is it mean invest of our alumni how we invest them how we can get them to have some activity with us and reduce dialect financial request no need to think we will get money from them first okay alumni should keep them when they come let them have some facility for them okay and let them happy with us so it mean we should have some interesting news to them let them enjoy with our activity they if they cannot enjoy with our activity they can read from the news so entertain entertaining our news to them okay and also the important is communication the communication should should be feel like a personally okay like a face to face let we should understand that they close with whom what is their good friend we can let the, the friend talk together like that okay this is for communication and another thing that uh, we can connect okay with the social media but for the social media that i already show what here uh, what the, for the, the face of the the student or the alumni we should uh, separate now uh, how many how many year that they already get it and how we contact with them for the, uh, the media i mean the media okay and another thing is maintain relationship maintain the relationship is also really important because something that we losing our connection with the alumni okay we should uh, have some connect that uh, should have the like uh, the crowd data the database of alumni we can call to them and make them become the group member of line or facebook like that like now really easy uh, different with long time and like uh, we can use our 
uh, contact or seminar together like that. I stay in Thailand and I contact with you in the Philippines. Okay. Now it's really easy. Okay. And another thing is Im improve. No? How, how, how we improve and involve our alumni to our campus life. Like the dean, you should invite them to join with the campus activity uh, in the CPAF. Make event and let them come to join on the president of CPAF. You can invite them come to join with the activities. Maybe not just only one year or one time. Okay, can make every maybe two or three months can work or can do for one time. And no need to think that they will come all. Just only some they come and they will have word of mouth, you know, talk together in the future. Okay, and they can, you know, if they have time, they can come to enjoy with us in the future like that. So what is the academic uh, collaboration? The important is if they work in the university or institution, we can make like a faculty and researcher exchange. Okay. And another thing is student mobility and exchange also. The student of them, I mean of our alumni can join with us. Why with the faculty? maybe become supervisor or advisorship like that. Curriculum development can work together. Like, like now, I would like to work with CPAP. I would like to work with Siaga. I would like to work with another university in the Philippines. We can join together, make a curriculum development together. So for more and more relationship in the future. And another thing is, collaborative research project. Like uh, we can have the research project between alumni and alumni, yeah? but with Vietnam, with, uh, from uh, maybe alumni from Vietnam, from Indonesia, like, like now I also work with Dr. Budi Kuntolo in Kachamada University and some of our friends from Japan who get it from our uh, UP Los Banjos like that. Okay, make research together or training or another non-degree activities that I told you, lead skill, upskill of our alumni activity, joy with publication. You know, in your country, I mean in the Philippines, you really good in write paper in English, can make a publication really easy. If we can join together like a Thailand can work with you and we can publication together like that, it's really good. Right now, if you become the lecturer in the university, they should, they should present, they should uh, publish their paper in publication, okay? and conduct of our lecturer and maybe symposium that we have like we can do right now, okay? And another is academic information materials. Now the materials. I just will give you some of activity that I already learned with uh, UPLB Association alumni in Thailand with our friend, uh, with our professor in the Philippines or in Indonesia, of course, with Japan, with uh, Taiwan or in China. So right now I established AAUN. We call ASEAN Agriculture University Network. We try to do like you can see our friend, from Indonesia, from Vietnam, from Cambodia, you know, most of the majority of them get it from UP Los Banjos. Okay, get it from UP Los Banjos. That now I let them work together, join together, and we have association for agriculture, association like that. This is right now I am the president of AAUN. We already have meeting for two or three times. Another thing that uh, we all, all, all 
already have uh, the group meeting like uh, the second of AAUN for 2018. I established for AAUN start from 2017, just three years. Now we have the member already more than 60 member, 60 member for 11 countries. Okay, this is the second of AAUN forums. You can see the big group will come. I also invite our friend from many countries to join together from Singapore, they also have there from Indonesia, from Vietnam, and of course, we have the group from Bhutan uh, to join with, with uh, our AAUN uh, meeting forum. And of course, when I went to uh, Kasesat University, during that time, I not yet become the president of UPLB Alumni Association of Thailand, but from February, the 1st of February, 2019, they invite me to join with their conference. I mean, during that time is the lecturer from Kasesa University. He, he be, became the uh, president for almost four, four, or three, uh, four, four or five years. And after that, he passed away. No one who become the president. So they invite me to join with the uh, conference. And after that, in in that time, you can see our alumni, associate, a member, association, uh, UPLB association member in Bangkok. Most of them, they stay in Bangkok, right? So after that, they keep me become the president. Okay? They vote and keep me become the president at that time. I mean, from February 1st, 2019. After that, I learned for another project, but we work with our, our friend from Bangkok. I mean, with uh, Kasesa University, with Chula Longkorn University, and of course with UNESCO. And during that time, uh, Dr. Cardenas is the head of the group. She also would like to have like a workshop with the Aaku also, with Siaka also. So after that, I mean, when we become the host, I mean, Metro University become the host of a uh, workshop, of workshop during 26 and 27 of June, 2019. At that time, our university, I mean, Thai, uh, Metro University become the host, but I could not join with them. I went to Taiwan during that time. I will let you, you see that I went to Taiwan, but this is the activity. I let my staff to run the program with the uh, Siaka, with, of course, with Dr. Cardenas. You can see Dr. Cardenas also joined with us. At that time, we have more than 50 of them join with the activities. This is also we call technical workshop technical workshop. So some of them also UPLB alumni. Okay. And during that time, I went to uh, I went to Taiwan on June 25 to 26 because we have AAKU. Right now also I am the president of AAKU board committee, right? So we invite them to Taiwan. Why? Because I have also really relationship, I mean, a good relationship with many university in Taiwan. Like uh, we went to Chongqing University. During that time also, Aaku tried to join with uh, uh, Taiwan University. Okay. They joined with also with uh, Chongqing. And we run the program. We have meeting for Aaku board committee meeting in Chongqing. And during that time, we also have study tour. Aaku study tour for 2019. Okay, you can see we have the uh, participant from uh, six or five, uh, six, 
country. Yeah, we have USA, we have Thailand, Malaysia, Japan, Korea, Indonesia, and Philippines. Of course, with the Philippines. Okay, eighteen of them. I mean, eighteen of the students join with our program. We call the study program in Chongqing University in Taiwan from June twenty six to July fifth of two thousand nineteen. And during that time, our board committee of Paku, we come to, uh, you know, open with them and join with them. You can see 50 of them, I mean, 18 from another country, but in Taiwan also, they join together like that, become the big group. And we also have the afternoon meeting and we met the president of uh, National Chongqing University. NCHU, NCHU. So in that time, we we also talk with the president of NCHU, and another day we went to NCUT. The president of NCUT or National Changi University of Technology. This is also located in in Taichung, in Taichung. And another university that we already visit them in Taiwan is the one of the private university in uh, Taoyuan, it mean Wanang University. And after that, you know, when we met together, our board committee, they also have uh, come to uh, many university in the Philippines, in Malaysia, some in from Malaysia, some from uh, Japan, right? They can work together and try together in the future. Okay. And another activity after June, we went to Indonesia. We work with Kachamada University. That I told you, I have very good friend, Dr. Budi Kuntolo. He also CPAP alumni. And, you know, right now we also work together like that. So we have 36 participants from nine countries. In uh, the, the, the group is they join with the student activities. We, we call like a summer course in Kachamada University for integrated food security in Asia like that. You can see from uh, Ethiopia, they come from Indonesia, of course, from South Korea, from the Philippines, from Thailand, from Cambodia, Malaysia, Timor Leste, and Vietnam. Okay, and that time you can see the student also enjoy with summer course. Uh, Doctor Kol uh, Fima Kolalo also join with us. Okay, this is our activity on July. On July. And come back on September on 2019. I become the host. I mean, Major become the host of Aaku regular regular board meeting, and of course with uh, international workshop that we have. So this is we also put together not just only Aaku. I put AAUN so become the big group. The member of AAKU join with the member of AAUN. At that time, you can see the group will become bands, I mean, spend and extend our membership with another. Okay, you can see the big group already come. This is the third of AAUN conference. And I put together with AAKU. And this is the board committee right now. Um, the president. So maybe next year we move to Japan, become the president, but because uh, COVID come, so they let me become president another year like that. Normally they have just only two years now, I, I will become the president of three years. We also went, yeah, the big group, they went to my farm. I will let you see that I already have Tama. Uh, Chinese they call tama, but in English we call cannabis or marijuana. 
I think in the Philippines cannot plan right like now, but you know, in my uni university, we also have legal, not unlegal, no, legal can plant marijuana. 20,003. Okay, you can cannabis in our university. That's only one university in Thailand that we can plant our marijuana and organic. Organic, I, I just focus on organic because if not become organic, they cannot use for the medical and all the medicine. Okay. And another thing is uh, the traditional variety. Okay. I mean, native variety. We didn't bring from outside. So we already have like that. This is the minister of Thailand come to join with us, okay? And plan it for the first. You know, Malihona now we already like this. That's only three months or four months you can have it. So one year you can plan more than two or three times. Okay, one kilogram. If you make already dry for the flower, you can get more than forty thousand baht or 40 or 50,000 peso per one kilo. This is really, you know, I call a pen. Not only indoor, but we can plan outdoor already. Okay, indoor and outdoor. This is a whole of marijuana or cannabis. Like this. You can see. This is legal, right? not illegal. If you come, the dean, please come and enjoy with it. Well, it's merely, but for medicine. Huh? Okay. And after that, on last December 2019, you can see Dr. Blenda, Dr. Duhai Dongsot, and also Fima Kolalo. They can they come to join with us. So I put together A A U N A A K U. We call A A U N and A A K U International Forum. And I put together already U P L B Alumni Association of Thailand Summit. This is the first summit that after I became the president of U P L B Alumni Association. So we have our good. Uh, relationship work together. We also, also invite our professor from the Philippines, from UP, come to join with us here in Thailand. Okay, you can see. And also with the ambassador of the Philippines in Thailand, we invite her to join, become our keynote speaker. So we can make good relationship together and our uh, former uh, alumni that also come to join with us. So at that time, we have almost 100 of them. I mean, for UPLB alumni to join with us in Chiang Mai, okay? This is one or more thing that I would like to let you see what we work together and UPLB alumni will success, okay? So I just wrote here, UPLB always in my heart. You can see this now. I put in my heart. <laughs> okay. So I just went. No, I went to see up. If I have time, I call. I went to join. So I would like to meeting with all of you there in the Philippines. If I have something, I would like to donate. Okay. So during Doctor Cardenas is the dean. I also went there. Yeah, he also keep and uh, donate something for our alumni, the dean also. Okay, when I went there, dean uh, Lolando take care of me also. Okay, and of course, during a uh, hundred one of loyalty day, thank you very much for UP to keep me, for CPAP to keep me outstanding. Okay, for last year. So I um, enjoy and we also enjoy with loyalty day that I would like this year also, I would like to join, but COVID come. 
I could not go there. <laughs> but okay, my heart also there like that. Okay, this is for last year. Okay, that activity that we have together. So right now that I told you in Thailand we have Philippine Alumni Association. <laughs> not just OB, only UPLB, but the Philippine also. So I hope that they have maybe twenty thousand the member in Thailand who get it from the Philippines. So right now we work together also. I'm also the member, you can see, I have the card. We call uh, ID card for our association with the, the Philippines. Last year we also have uh, bowling. Pakita bowl like that. <laughs> just last year, uh, this year, I mean, just before COVID come. And January 2000, Two, uh, uh, 20. 20. Uh, yeah, we just last year, and uh, this year, but uh, just before COVID come, we also have uh, work in Bangkok like that for bowling. Okay. Yeah. So for the future plan that I would like to show to all you and I would like to invite you to join and give my also the opportunity of my university to join with the uh, UP Los Banos within uh, Lodendo and just just talk tell to your chancellor now. My friend is Kamacho, right? <laughs> just let him understand that I would like to become consortium of Siaga. If can be, because I already apply. Okay. I meeting with them, meeting I met you also last time. And I already apply, maybe coming November, they will come to Kasesa. And I will go there for present of the university. That if Mejo can become consortium of Siaka, I can work with CPAP, I can work with UP Los Banos, okay, for the long run in the future. And of course, I invite the dean, I invite all of you come to Metro University coming December. I put together also AAUN, AAKU, International Forum, and UPLB Alumni Association of Thailand for the second summit that we already put here. But this is just only uh, put some uh, topic. If you would like to join with us or if you would like to change the date, okay, Available for you if you want to join. I, I can change. Now we already made for December 18 to 19. I don't know, maybe before a new year. I think you can come to Thailand at that time. Thank you very much. And I would like to say thank you that you invite me to join for today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Maraming salamat po. Yeah. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wirapun, for that uh, very interesting and exciting presentation. Uh, we're very glad uh, for all the efforts. I would like to congratulate you for all the efforts that you are doing in uh, Thailand. Uh, I like your uh, roadmap and your uh, strategies to improve uh, alumni engagement. Uh, also, very interesting is uh, the plan to have uh, more uh, academic collaboration in terms of research, training, uh, joint advising, and uh, publications. This will go a long way uh, for strengthening UPLB uh, Alumni uh, Alliance. And I think uh, we will have a very good uh, partnership. Um, Especially when the pandemic is over, uh, we'd like to see more uh, to visit you in Thailand. And of course, you're yes. very much welcome uh, to uh, go to the Philippines anytime, uh, especially here in Sipap. Now that uh, we have a new chancellor, the person of, uh, uh, well, incoming chancellor, uh, Don Camacho, and uh, we will have a very nice uh, partnership in the offing and uh, we like also to see you to be part of the Circa Consortium that will further uh, improve our uh, partnership. 
and I think uh, we'll have a, a very nice uh, relationship uh, in the future. So, uh, but uh, I like to call uh, another uh, UPLB outstanding alumnus, uh, Dr. Kuku uh, Lopez. Uh, she's now affiliated with the uh, Development Academy of the Philippines as a member of its academic council and a member of the National Mission Council of the De La Salle uh, Philippines Incorporated. But she's also very much uh, a CIPAP uh, alumnus and uh, she has CIPAP in her heart as well as UPLB. Yes. Uh, Ma'am uh, Kuku? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, uh, yes, ma yes, ma okay, okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, that was a very good, very uh, extensive uh, 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 talk about uh, alumni association. You have a very mature, you have a very mature uh, uh, program, and the processes are already in place. And I, I, I envy you. I guess in many ways here in the Philippines, we do not have that kind of a very mature alumni association. And the only one I've seen so far that can bring in a lot of their alumni in one swing would be La Salle. The La Salle University. And they are very, uh, very, uh, you know, uh, their, their program is that practically everyone is there at all levels. The way, the way you described it in terms of the, the, the age groupings, and the, the, the kind of division that you have in terms of the maturity in the ability to do things, uh, La Salle would probably be one of those that I could see doing yours as mature as yours. And uh, in, one, in one call, everybody seems to be there already and attending meeting. For all the years I've been there, the, their alumni association is very much in the picture. And in fact, even at the time when Brother Armin Luis Tro was the Secretary of Education, the association would be very, very actively supporting the Department of Education. So in that sense, I, I'm, I'm glad that we have one as an example, but that I think generally most of us would be still in the development stage. And uh, I would like to thank you along with uh, Dean, who our Dean who will soon be our uh, Vice Chancellor. Congratulations, sir. Uh, I would like to join him in saying thank you for providing us with a strategic roadmap for the UPLB Alumni Association to consider. And the nine-year timeline and the trajectory of the strategies towards pro professionalizing the globalizing agriculture and society in innovation network provides us with a ready handle in how we may want to, to start our own program. Uh, instead of just reading what you've sent us, although there's a lot that's not there, and listening to your presentation, I actually translated your PowerPoint to a one-pager framework using your variables. This way, I was able to experience your design and showed me to appreciate it better. I, I didn't want to just listen. I want to say, may I lay this down on a paper and see whether I could understand it and I could see how we can operationalize it on our own. So let me just bring in my PowerPoint for a while so that we could look at it. Thank you, Mom Kukyu. Ah, can, can I, yes na? Yes, po. yes you can yes, share it, po. You can share it. Okay, okay. Let me, oh, wait. Let me just get my technical. <laughs> <laughs> may stop share, stop share na naman sila, di ba? Naka stop share na. Hindi. Kay Mam Kuku. Okay, si 
i-chat natin. Ay, bak- bidding pala to. <laughs> Pachat si Sir Dom. Kung nasa live siya. Nasa, nasa palit siya. Ha? Eh, marami yung hawak yan. Marami yung hawak yan. Parang ako lang din yan. Tatlong zoom meeting siya. Siya siya. Stop ko na. Eh, dito na lang. Dito na lang may PM. Oh, uh, then Hello again. Can you hear me now? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Okay, is it on? Okay. Now this is this is a reaction of a of a, a, a setup where we are still like convincing our people to join and be active in the association. So I I, I this is what I did. I came up with my own interpretation of what you of what we've done and and look at the vision uh, the vision essentially is very much uh, uh, professionalizing in in a globalizing agriculture and social innovation and i thought about it and i said to myself uh, if i am going to have this as a vision how do i visualize what is a globalizing agriculture and what is the is the societal innovation that i need to address so i said i guess the first thing i need to do with the group with the, with the, with the university is for us to think about what is it that we see that will make us move how do i visualize it and again i said maybe we have to have a longer talk and not just bring out what exactly is the picture of the vision? So in, in, I said, therefore, there will be a lot of meetings that we need to do. The next thing that I looked at is our goal. And I like the way you broke it out into three. But what was missing is I did not get the breakdown of from starting to maturing to at the time when you can already uh, afford millions to donate. I, I did not get that. And therefore, it was not factored it when I was doing it. But I like that it was br- broken down into three. It makes you feel that you are able to, to, to nurse the group into maturing until they're able to reach where it is already uh, international level. Okay? So, and then I said, you started with, uh, with a bigger picture already. In my case, I said, no, I cannot do it that big yet. So regional for us is something like the 17 regions in the Philippines. And then I moved to the ASEAN, which means those will be about the 10 countries we need to talk to. Right? And then I said, maybe then that's the only time we can talk of international globalizing agriculture innovation network. Because for us, we need to be able to grow our group into maturity, into thinking. Because it requires you giving your time. It requires giving you yourself. It, it's the time that you're able to give money to. And all of the, the collaboration that we could work on. So I, get, I said three year, nine years would be a good time. And this would be what would be the likely movement we can be doing. And then I move on to the outcome. When we do these things, what would be the outcome? How do I see we are already successful? And I still picked up your values. So this is how I termed it, as an outcome, but it's based on values. So I said that um, unified group of professionals who are leaders producing brilliant ideas towards relevant and responsive actions supported by the alumni association to achieve transformation. 
So this is the end. This should be what I will see as a group of people transformed already with the help of the alumni association. But because we are unified and we are already dealing with professionals who are mostly leaders by the time you go to the, the, the second phase would already be leaders and having brilliant ideas that they can put into action. So I said, this is the outcome that I would like to have. And then I said, now what would be the strategies? And I like that you have two major ones. You bring in, maintain the affinity and then engage the alumni. And that's why I like the beautiful lined up of, of, of a breakdown because it, give, it makes it very clear to me. Now, when I was doing it, I didn't have that and it was not very clear to me how, but I said it can be done. So those are the two major things that I saw. And then you divided it. And I called it programs, projects, and activities. And so the first one is set up a volunteer program that will involve alumni as committee, board members for marketing, academic, operational matters. And I see that a lot in La Salle. People with, with companies, people with a uh, high paying job, people at the CEO, COO would trip to La Salle and be there part of the brothers thinking out what they can do for the school. And these are, they, they're not paid. They are just given merienda and, 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 and they do the thing. They are the think tanks. The next is invite alumni for on-campus events where they share their own experiences as students or give practical experiential inputs to explain theories. Even if it is just a subject, invite them, be, make, make them already resource persons as early as when they are already students. Next is open a mentoring program for students and for recent graduates on their career needs. So they're still there in the, in the first phase. The next one is giving back to the alumni community uh, co community may include already donating money, free consulting advice. I guess I, I was already following your aging process, but it would have been good if I got what you, you have, uh, that, that breakdown, because it will, it will give life to this. Then I move on to the next one. This will already be the mature group. Engage alumni in meaningful ways to gain support for the university in their marketing, operational, academic, and in other areas where the school may need help. And the first one is build lifelong learning relationships with students while still in school. I like that one because that's, I'll be focusing on that one much later. The next is invest on them. That's why you want to put internet, you want to give uh, uh, a place where they can be, uh, they, can, they can have, you can host their meetings and, and it's good because they see that you're not just after their money, that you are also investing in them and that they are part of the whole uh, building up of the school. The next one is provide interesting, entertaining, personal uh, things that need to happen with the group through the social media. And the last one was reduce direct financial requests. Let it come naturally. Do not keep on pushing it. Let them see, make them part of the planning. And especially for those who are already mature, they get to see that there is a need. They can voluntarily give it because they were part of the planning. They saw the need and they saw that there is scarcity from the end of the school. And so this is where you bring in, you bring in the idea of this is the time for them to help without you saying, can you give money? So it is already from their own heart, as you said, from the heart already. Okay, then the next two, which is common to both, is ask for feedback all the time for anything and everything about the university. Be, make them part of the looking at things, make them part of the planning. The last one here is, which is very important, is keep a complete database of its alumnus from the time they were students and regularly conduct a tracer survey. Because this is how you will create the continuity of the family. 
the concept of the family within the university. Okay, so this was how I put it together. I don't know, did I hit anything from what you have presented, Dr. Mirapun? Was I close to what you wanted to happen? Because, um, okay, because this is what I thought, if I am the one who's going to implement it, this is how I would like to put it together so that it's easy for the people to see where they are located. But then it required me to also answer some basic questions. And, I, and, and that is very more primitive than what we are talking about, which is really, uh, no, let me move, finish. And I like the way the collaborations are coming out because it cut across. It cut across all the areas of the university. So we now can do this. And after all, collaboration is part of the 21st century skill. And this is what we need to do. With what is happening in with the pandemic, we are seeing that there is no other way for us to move and get out of this hole except to collaborate across across industries and this is where this thing is very important to me that these are areas of collaboration in the future it is going to be the platform of many things that will be done we need to collaborate okay now the next one that is very critical to me because i think we are we are still uh, experiencing uh, uh, this interest among alumni to join. And this is where I would like to, to, to see why do we have this, this interest? Of course, there is the money to pay for, your, for the, uh, for the uh, participation and for the travel and for the uh, joining, uh, joining mentoring. But more than that, I'd like to see what is the basic thing that we need to address. Uh, and I look and I saw this article or in a book of organi uh, entitled Organizational Identification in Alumni Relations, written by Christine Edsel Mueller of Marquette University. She said that the ways alumni can connect to the alma mater are represented through how the alumni identify themselves to the organization. It's very hard to pull a graduate which has very little identity connection with the school. You will never bring them back unless their old girlfriends are there attending the reunions. But what is it really? Organizational identification allows the alumni the opportunity to, to create, uh, 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 I'm being covered basically, let me just check this one, uh, being covered, Wait, let me refer to my, uh, I'm being covered by the pictures. Uh, uh, is, to create a long lasting relationship with their alma mater. And that's why I like what you were talking about that from the time they are students, bring them in, take care of them already. Organizational identification, if I move this again. Organizational identification is a form of social identification whereby a person comes to view himself or herself as a member of the organization, also known as the social entity, identity. The entity, that's identity, okay? So, as early as when they are students, they feel they are part of a group already, which is a very fundamental need of anyone. So this is the psychology of participation. I like that you have already all the programs on how to do it, but that I would still want to touch the spirit of each one. Unless you have that, unless you have that clingy thing that you bring into the student, to the alumni, it is very hard to bring them back. And therefore, the caring is there. 
And that's why probably you will not be uh, surprised that some of us, when the dean call us to do something, we say, yes, sir. And we join. Because I think in, among our batchmates, there is this very strong attachment to SIPAF, to the ICPAF. And that's why when they called me to, to, to do this, I didn't hesitate and I said, yes. Because I think the spirit has been put there as early as when we were students. Okay, now let me move to the next slide. Now, social identity, sense of who we are based on our group membership. That we, were, that we were made to feel we are part of ICPAF, made us join the party, made us go to the meetings, even when we were students, stand, uh, stay there longer in, until they are closing the gate. I think that is because we have gotten that sense that we are part of the group. The next one is Henry Tazvel is the one who owns the theory. He proposed that the group's example, social class, family, university, clubs, football team, uh, uh, which people belong, are very important because it gives them the pride and self-esteem. So let's not forget the psychology of the, uh, of the foundation of alumni resolution, uh, relations, okay? And this is him, that's Henry. And he said that group gives us a sense of social identity, a, son, a sense of belonging to the social world. We normally divide our world into them and us based on a process called social categorization where we put people, including ourselves, into social group. So this is, these are lessons you've taken when you were still in your bachelor's years in sociology one. Okay, uh, and stereotyping as a process at its most basic state, not emotional, no? Where people are grouped and categorized is based on a normal cognitive process. That's when we teach our children who does not belong, which does not belong, the grouping. And this is very naturally there as part of being a person, okay? The next slide is alumni relations is premised on the idea that universities create a strong sense of self-identity amongst it graduates such that they look upon it as a safe heaven, a place to go home to, an institution that formed them well, no matter that they experience hell in the hands of terror teachers, and at the same time for them to have their memory bank of youthful adventures, okay? So yun yun. And then they are good sources of monetary assistance for the and university's needs. is just secondary to the higher purpose of continuing the role of the university in providing the alumni the self, um, the self, what's this again? I am, I'm lost because I'm covered. In any case, um, the last one that I'm going to read to you is that in the presentation of um, President Mirapun um, mentioned initiatives leading to the following. The university's first responsibility is to form the self-identity of our alumni from the time they enter the university premises as youthful 18-year-olds until they graduate and then engage the alumni as professionals in various capacities. Now, this is my ending. In parting, while I know the topic is essentially focused on foreign alumni members and how to take care of them and engage them, I tend to believe that all graduates of our university must be treated the same way, everybody. I am one of those who felt very well cared for. Thank you very much. I am very fortunate that ICPAF offices, including the library, have always taken care of me and my batchmates very well. 
Our self-identity as ICPAF UPLB graduate is pretty much defined. We are just a phone away to many of the CPAF officers and ready to lend our expertise for the programs and projects of CPAF. And we, on the other hand, run to our mentors to partner with us in our own activities as equals. Doctors G. Cardenas, Dailene Cabanilla, Rowena Bacongis, and Acer Javier have crossed over to our agencies. We keep the lines open at both ends. And that is what I think we ought to do. Marry the idea of the self-identity with the things that have been presented by Dr. Mirapun. And I think we will be successful in our programs for our uh, alumni. And that is my uh, reaction to the paper. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kuku. Uh, it was really a uh, comprehensive one and uh, that you made uh, it in a uh, holistic framework so that uh, our alumni and of course uh, the university can be further guided uh, on how to uh, strengthen self-identity and of creating a sense of place for our alumni. Uh, is, uh, Chancellor Dong, uh, is he, you know? Well, yeah, okay. Uh, nice Chancellor first. Dong, uh, could you please uh, say some messages? Uh, Dr. Wirapun is here. <laughs> Very happy see Dr. Wirapun. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, good afternoon, uh, Dr. Kuku. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for uh, the uh, uh, very, uh, I would say, uh, integrative, highly integrative, uh, you know, highlighting the integrative feature of your uh, comments uh, on this afternoon's uh, uh, presentation of my friend, uh, president of Major University, Dr. Uh, Wirapun. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today. And thank you very much, uh, SIPAF, uh, Dean Bellio, and to the faculty and staff of SIPAF, and to the alumni of uh, SIPAF. Thank you very much for uh, uh, giving me this opportunity to share uh, my views. As, as I have uh, mentioned yesterday, all this uh, uh, alumni webinar uh, would inform us about how we come up with a framework for a renewed uh, UPLB uh, alumni partnership, a kind of framework that will uh, really harness uh, the potential benefits of uh, forging partnerships uh, collaboration with our alumni, including our international uh, alumni. Thank you, Dr. Wirapun. Uh, let me just uh, share you, if I may uh, be allowed to share a screen, uh, a related uh, UK study uh, a related UK study, if uh, if uh, all of you can see now this screen, yes. uh, about a UK study. It's very related to this afternoon's uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Dr. Kuku. Uh, can... uh, yeah, we are implementing a UK uh, transnational education program with the British Council, funded by funded by uh, uh, CHED. Uh, we are implementing the dual PhD program with Liverpool and with the University of Reading. And we're given this, uh, this uh, literature. And uh, to, to, to my surprise, uh, uh, this afternoon's uh, program is very related to one of their uh, case studies. But in essence, uh, the, 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 uh, the UK study would emphasize that international alumni are, uh, has, they have paramount role uh, to support universities' academic development. Uh, the case of Dr. Wirapun. Dr. Wirapun, you are now uh, supporting academic development uh, in major university. We have so many alumni uh, serving as presidents, uh, ministers of education in their own countries. And uh, you have gained uh, this uh, skills, competencies, and training uh, from UPLB. And uh, UPLB would be very proud of this uh, uh, skills uh, and uh, 
the things that you are now uh, sharing to your own countries and your own uh, institution. The other uh, role of uh, inter our international alumni, like that of Dr. Wirapun, is uh, in support of global uh, employability. And the last one would be uh, focusing uh, uh, of alumni support, our international alumni in support of international uh, recruitment. So I may, if I may just share this uh, important UK study, which is in support of this uh, afternoon's uh, presentation. Congratulations to Ma'am Kuku and to you, President Sarah. Mirapun and to the College of Public Affairs, faculty and staff, and uh, alumni. Mabuhay po kayong lahat. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Chancellor uh, Dom Comacho, uh, for that very inspiring message. Uh, uh, this uh, afternoon's uh, webinar really uh, put some impetus to our drive to uh, enhance uh, UPLB alumni uh, alliances and partnerships. Uh, now we move to some uh, open forum, but uh, I'd like to uh, read some of the uh, congratulatory messages from uh, Dr. Maria Pinajola of the National College of uh, Public Administration and Governance. Uh, so congratulations and thank you for that impressive presentation, Dr. Tongma. Uh, I, I agree with Dr. Lopez that your alumni association is very mature already. Nicely put, Dr. Lopez. Uh, and then, uh, Dr. Jola added that uh, she's in, interested in the organic uh, cannabis cultivation uh, <laughs> in major university. So there's also a uh, congratulatory, congratulatory message from uh, Ms. Rosalina Lapitan, uh, who is the PAA uh, president. Okay. Uh, so we, we met uh, last year. Uh, during the uh, awarding of the uh, Outstanding Alumnus uh, last year, uh, during the Loyalty Day celebration. And of course, uh, there's uh, some congratulatory message from uh, Forrester Leo Bal Balispin, who's now the president of the UPLB Alumni Association, for the information and the idea shared by uh, President uh, Tongma. So, uh, <laughs> We have uh, uh, some questions. Pau, uh, Pau, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Pau, uh, okay. But I, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, share the microphone to uh, Doctor uh, Resti Collado. First, uh, I would like to greet our incoming chancellor, Doctor Sir. It's very nice uh, to hear your voice, and uh, you made me us feel that you're one of us, despite the fact that you'll be very soon holding the campus of your university. You still make us feel that it's the same no Camacho that we are dealing with. Thank you, sir. And I would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Tongma. Your lecture impressed me so much because uh, I got a lot of uh, new ideas. You injected a lot of approaches that probably we can adopt here in uh, your PLD. And I also would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Lopez. Uh, you made a very comprehensive analysis of the presentation of Dr. Tongma such that you even made your own model that we can adapt. And I, I think uh, it can be done. It can be done. It's just a matter of, you know, putting our minds together yes. so that we can come up with something that will really energize our UPLB AA here in UPLB. <clears throat> you know, uh, this year we are the Golden Jubilarians and 50 years behind us gave us a perspective of what we should have done which is probably why we are very eager at this stage of our lives, 50 years after, we realized that we should have done more. Now, what was missing in the years past? 
the thing is, uh, I think all of us who graduate from UPLB just go out as new graduates. And we carry the identity of UPLB within us. But the thing is, we need something to cement, to galvanize our own identity with the others. Even before we find ourselves trying to give something back to UPLB, in any reunion that I have attended, it is always the excitement, the looking forward to meet the old classmates that come first. And I think that should be cultivated within the group. We in Bat 70, we got together in 2015. And the first thing that I did was to renew the memories that brought us together. And out of that, spontaneously, the feeling of let's do something for our, our university came later. Now, how do we do that? I think the question is the how. Hmm? We have our own identities, but we need to be able to put together the same identities together as one group. And as Dr. Lopez said, it is a process. And as Dr. Thomas said, it should start during the student's life. I think it should uh, start uh, right before the graduation, because that is the time when the students, uh, graduating students, begin looking forward to what there would be as soon as they leave the portals of UPLB. The only the problem that we saw here is that here in UPLB, we don't have a systematized, updated database of our alumni. It took us five years to locate our members and we succeeded on in locating only about 120. The thing is when the word came out that the Bat 70 is putting up a show despite the pandemic, this loyal today, suddenly we began attracting the old members who did not hear about us heretofore. My point is, uh, I think under the leadership of the new chancellor, and I congratulate him for choosing the right person to lead the OAR, the Office of Alumni Relations, is to put together first a updated database. Basically, their contact numbers, because that everything starts with communication. Then from there on, you go back to where you came from and then where you are going to as a group. You put on your exam, that's, that's what happened to our, our BAT 70. Once you have that, then it's just a matter of sustaining that kind of uh, grouping. And in, in our case, what sustained us was a common goal to celebrate our golden jubilee this Lawyer's Day 2020. As a matter of fact, I'm proud to say that it is the same solidarity, unity that enabled us to carry out the plans to celebrate a virtual Lawyer's Day this coming Saturday. Without that, there would not be a loyalty day as we envision it on Saturday. So again, going back, how do we strengthen the alumni? I think uh, in the model that was shown earlier by Dr. Tongma, we should consider those outside of the academy. Because in my experience in this, uh, this time, the people who supported our alumni grouping are people who were out of the academy. These are the people, the businessmen enjoy, uh, employed in uh, private companies that have the means and they are the most eager to go back to UPLB. You know, they have the academics, they are always here in UPLB, but 
those who have been assigned in other countries, who have worked in international organizations, private companies, they are the ones who are now eager to give back. Because let's admit it, in any organization, logistics is very important. And I did not have much problem this time. Now, I like that model we're in, and I think uh, Chancellor is listening, uh, the Dean here, the Dean Roland is listening that I like that model where you in, invite outsiders to be part of the panels during defense of thesis or even during the formulation of the thesis. I have been harking, especially in the College of Agriculture, that whenever we formulate a thesis problem, let us first think forward, will this be useful? Or are we just repeating the same topic again and again, simply because we want to graduate? I would like to see a program wherein it will be need-based. All the thesis proposals, including CIPAF, let us have a program. Let us uh, focus our attention to identifying the needs first before we even formulate what kind of thesis we would like to perform. So that, and this is again, the incentive that we can provide the external audience of UPLB, the businessmen, companies. When we have a program that is that has a different, different market for their products, then we are doing something for our country, for our community. Now, going back to that, I, I like the program. And believe me, there are many of us in Batch 70 who would be willing to come back to UPLB, teach free, involve ourselves in sharing our minds and experiences on you formulate your thesis this way. We don't go to the usual formula of, you know, citing the objective and then the methodology and then the results and discussion. No, we will teach you how this is how you will need. You will use your thesis when you are finished. That kind of program, I think, will attract the alumni. And that is the only way you can give them a sense of belonging again. The thing is, when we go out of the university, we are just like any graduate, okay, any professional. Right? And I think the first thing that, that should be done here in UPLB, and I am very much eager to see an energized, active, systematized operation of the Office of the Alumni Relation is to make the UPLB come back here. You have a home at the alumni office. I think under the baton of uh, the incoming chancellor, because he is very young, the, the experience is still very young in him, and he is the future, then he is now in the best position to really guide and create a roadmap on how we can involve the alumni. In our uh, webinar yesterday, of which I was the host, I identified the Department of Agriculture because I used to be the undersecretary before. That there should be a trilogy. The department as a national government agency, the alumni, and then the UPLB. With that triangle of cooperation, I think we can create something of synergy. And I, I would like to see that happen here. Um, I think this afternoon's webinar has been very educational <coughs> to me, especially uh, Dr. Thomas' concept, because he is now projecting to UPLB a thinking of a foreign alumnus. And therefore, he is looking from the outside, looking at the forest. We in the forest, we only see the trees. We don't see the forest. But Dr. Thomas was able to give us a perspective of how the UPLBA should be looked from the outside perspective. And Dr. Lopez, 
being identified now with LaSalle. Yes, ma'am, I, I agree with you. The LaSalle is very good because I, we have many, uh, uh, I have many fellow co-alumni in LaSalle who graduated from Nagoya University and they are organized. Now, if we have minds like Dr. Lopez, Dr. Tongma, and we have a chancellor like Dr. Camacho, we can now begin to create an, a new identity for our UPLB Alumni Association. That just a grouping of people that we look forward to giving a call whenever loyalty day is coming because we need money from them. No, we want them to be a partner, a partner in rebuilding the image of our UPLB, especially now that pandemic is in our midst. So with that, thank you again. I congratulate you, Dr. Toma. Please come back here because we are going to your place. Our president? Yes. Sir Leo. Sir Leo, our UPLB Alumni Association president. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Yeah. Oh, actually, I would just like to uh, congratulate all the or, all the organizers of this uh, webinar, and of course, we would like to express our appreciation and gratitude to Dr. Wirapon Tongma and, of course, to the other speaker, uh, Dr. <clears throat> Lopez. And uh, I am so grateful that. Uh, uh, a lot of things have been uh, discussed uh, that is uh, that are related to this uh, strategy that we are uh, having in, in uh, UPLBAA, which is uh, uh, 3C, connect, communicate, and cooperate. That's what we are doing. And actually, based on that, that's why we have this webinar. We have this uh, homecoming celebration through virtual, uh, virtual celebration even uh, in the midst of uh, pandemic. And rest assured that uh, we are doing our best to uh, <clears throat> strengthen the uh, interaction or relationship among alumni. As compared to other alumni association, our alumni association is uh, pale in comparison as to the financial component or aspect of the organization. That's why we uh, come up with a very, very big project, yung tahanan ng alumni complex. And, and everyone knows that the intention of that uh, alumni complex is to boost the uh, capability of our alumni association, which has been, uh, alam nyo naman, uh, very, very low. Uh, when I came in, we only have 200,000 uh, uh, pesos, <laughs> which is uh, very sad. And now, at least we have millions of pe pesos to speak of uh, with regards to the budget. And we intend to uh, reach the level of uh, uh, La Salle, wherein they have more than billions of pesos to spend for alumni-related projects. Yun po talaga ang target natin dyan. And uh, I hope that we are with you in this uh, undertaking. And the new uh, chancellor, I'm sure uh, we will, will work uh, with us uh, for the uh, realization of this uh, project. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. And of course, uh, mabuhay ang UPLBAA. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir Leo, thank you po. Uh, maybe uh, I can now turn over the uh, floor to uh, the CIPAP uh, Alumni Association President, uh, Mr. Paolo Velasco. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So before I present the certificate of appreciation to our good speaker and reactor, uh, let me uh, recognize first the some of the attendees 
uh, of this webinar. Uh, first, it's the incoming UPLB Chancellor, Dr. Don Camacho Jr. Sir, congratulations uh, to our UPLB Alumni Association President, uh, Press Leo Balispin, and uh, I see some of the Alumni Association Presidents of different colleges who are present. Uh, Dr. Resti Collado, the overall chairman of the 102nd Loyalty Day, uh, and my co-members of the steering committee who are also present. Uh, I saw the former Director General, NEDA Director General, Shell Habito. I saw him. Dr. Jola from uh, UPN CIPAG, uh, CIPAG professors and staff. Uh, may the CIPAP Alumni Association Treasurer, Dr. Atetic Santos David, for present CIPAP Alumni Association Secretary Attorney Venice Velasco. Um, I saw alumni, co alumni, Mr. Katsuhisa Ota, who are present. Dean Bello and other alumni who are present. Thank you for uh, joining with us today. Uh, let me read the citation. So, SIPAP Alumni Association and the SIPAP, alum, SIPAP Alumni and the, CIP, the College of Public Affairs and Development presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Wirapun Tongma in grateful recognition of his, his invaluable support as resource speaker during the webinar on Strengthening UPLB Alumni Alliance, an International Perspective, held on October 7, 2020, at the College of Public Affairs and Development, University of the Philippines, Los Baños, College Laguna. Signed, Rolando Tibelio, Dean of the College of Public Affairs and Development, and yours truly as the President of the College of Public Affairs Alumni Association. Same citation to Dr. Maria Corazon Pupu Lopez in grateful recognition of her invaluable support as reactor during the webinar on strengthening UPLB Alumni Alliance, an international perspective held on October 7, 2020 at the College of Public Affairs and Development, University of the Philippines, Los Banos, College Laguna, signed Rolando Tibelio, Dean, College of Public Affairs, and yours truly, President, College of Public Affairs Alumni Association. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Paolo Bilasco, uh, I guess uh, we are near the end of the webinar. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wirapun. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Pupu Lopez. Uh, you are indeed our treasures, uh, being outstanding uh, UPLB alumnus. And uh, this is not the end of this uh, sharing. And I think uh, we'll have more uh, of this uh, in the future uh, with the support of uh, everyone. Uh, the incoming UPLB administration, of course, the UPLB Alumni Association, uh, and uh, the uh, respective colleges uh, alumni associations. With that, uh, nagpapasalamat po kami sa inyong lahat at uh, padayon UPLB. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. See you in Thailand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do it, do it. Come to cannabis, cannabis. <laughs> Thank you. Thank happy. You, thank you, sir. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Uh, see you. Casinor, salamat. ITC, salamat. Bye. 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 Cannabis, cannabis. Cannabis. <laughs> Let's go to Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> Alumni Institute in Thailand. Yes, sir.